Hi, my name is John Consalvi. I'm the CEO of Lingua Health and Grupo Lingua. Today, I'm happy to have Carrie Slaymaker here with us. She has extensive experience working with bilingual children and children with autism. Thanks for coming, Carrie. Oh, thanks for having me. It's great to be here. What does a speech language pathologist need to consider when attempting to implement a new system of communication for a child with autism? Well, there are so many things to consider when we're looking at a mode of communication for a child with autism. But I'd say one of the most important things to consider is first looking at either the student and or the student's family's wants, desires. What are their needs for communication? I think a lot of times as speech pathologists, we might look at what we think would be the best mode of communication, but sometimes starting by just sitting down and having a conversation with the family and with the child is a great place to start. After that, you definitely want to look at what type of obstacles there might be that would inhibit the overall communication success of that mode of communication that's chosen. So for example, sometimes we look at gross motor or fine motor limitations, but typically when we're working with children with autism, we're thinking more about things that might inhibit um, their overall success, such as they might have a sensitivity to certain noises. So if we're looking at something like a voice output device, it might not work because the noise is going to bother them and they're just simply not going to use the device. We also might want to look at things such as blinking lights or their inability to track different um, icons on a page. So there are a lot of things for us to consider what might be a potential obstacle before we start choosing things that we might want to trial. A couple other things that we might want to look for is with whom is that person going to be communicating? We want to look at them in all of their environments. So we think about the home environment, maybe their academic environment, and also in their community to make sure they'll be successful in all of these communicative environments. We want to look at the type of support that they're going to be receiving um, at home, both at school, and implementing this type of device. And um, also, something that we have to think about is some type of high-tech device is indicated. Where's the funding going to come for, from in order to purchase that device? And then finally, especially with our children with autism, we want to consider what is their reason for communication. As we always say, if we don't have a motivating factor for them, we don't have therapy. So we need to look at, before we even start to implement, what's motivating for that student so we can really help to make a successful choice in choosing a mode of communication. Carrie, thank you very much for coming to talk to us today. Oh, it was a pleasure to be here.